Hello everyone, well it's that time of year again where you're going to be getting ready for fine arts here really soon uh, and I, I want to talk to you today specifically about the category of instrumental solos uh, but before I get into that I want to tell you, you know, the goal of fine arts uh, is for students like you, uh, whether you're in junior high, high school or in college, uh, to discover your gifts. Uh, then to develop them so you can be deployed for the kingdom of God, right? And uh, I want to tell you, I know I know that they say, you know, fine arts is not a competition, uh, and, but there's merit scholarships and all that good stuff and everything. But really, the greater goal is for you to be using your gift to win souls for Christ, okay? Uh, and so uh, even if you don't win merit this year, I understand that down the road, because of the things that maybe you learned and prepared, you know, for fine arts, uh, the Lord is going to be preparing you for, you know, a greater treasure uh, that you can win, which is actually to be able to take souls uh, into heaven, right? And so uh, you can't take that merit scholarship or, you know, that little trophy or whatever in heaven with you, but you can take uh, friends and, and other people with you. So I encourage you just to make sure that you always keep that at the forefront of whatever ministry and whatever uh, presentation you, you are working on, okay? Now, let's go ahead and talk about instrumental solos. Now, um, I want to tell you right now that uh, the very first thing I want to say off the bat is do not dare walk into that room uh, without first reading the rule book, okay? Uh, and you may think, dude, that's so easy. Duh, I know the rules, whatever. Uh, you would be surprised how many times that there have to be point deductions. Uh, and I can tell you, uh, having served as a judge many years, uh, there are a lot of point deductions that are just... Uh, it breaks your heart. It really does because you see a kid, you know, or you see a group or whatever. They, you can tell they put a lot of work and preparation into uh, their 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 presentation, uh, but they they just you know forgot about this one thing. Okay, uh, and I've also you know seen some pretty obvious things um, where you know maybe in one case I saw a group they they had a they performed a song uh, that was not a Christian song and it was actually a very suggestive. Uh, you know, a, a secular song. And so that was no bueno either, right? So we want to make sure that we everything that we uh, are doing at the Fine Arts uh, honors the Lord. And so uh, please make sure that you're following the rules, uh, that you don't get any time violations and things like that. Uh, all of those things can be found in the rule book. Uh, and if you know the rules pretty well, I can tell you right now on page eight, you'll find all the new stuff for this year, okay? Uh, and so, you know, probably what me that means is that last year there were some situations that led to having to develop new rules, and so you can find those on page eight. Also, I want to tell you that if you are uh, looking for just for general rules, uh, that whole introductory page, especially starting at page 15, uh, you can see general rules for the uh, entire festival, right? Uh, and also, if you are a person that is uh, wanting to, you know, know what instrument uh, instruments you can play that are approved Approved for fine arts, go to page 18, okay? I bet you didn't know that the tambourine is an acceptable instrument or the bongos, okay? And the triangle, believe it or not, is an acceptable instrument. Please, somebody do a triangle solo. I want to see a triangle solo um, at fine arts this year. But uh, anyway, uh, th those are acceptable instruments. And i tell you what, I, I judged um, a marimba solo. It was, you know, they played... Uh, a song called Yellow After the Rain, very well done. You can tell that kid probably plays at school and they uh, played a really, really pretty song. Uh, and uh, um, man, uh, they had great technique and it was a marimba, right? And so uh, all those kinds of things are acceptable there. Orchestral percussion uh, as well. Make sure you're looking at the rule book and that you are um, uh, consulting that before you make any major decisions, right? Uh, the second thing I want to tell you is that um, the, 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 the sheet that you get your score on is going to be broken down into four main categories. Okay. Uh, the very first one is selection, then, uh, communication, then presentation and technique are all rolled into one and overall effectiveness. Now, because I'm talking very generally about, uh, instrumental solos and some of them might be piano, guitar, whatever, uh, I want to kind of just skip ahead and focus on some of these aspects that pertain to all of those instruments, okay? Now, under selection, we already talked about, you know, uh, making sure that we're playing things that align with the uh, heart of the festival, right? But also, um, you know, is this appropriate, okay? Um, and you may have a very, very, you know, beginner level p player that is attempting, you know, musical uh, technique, you know, things that are a little bit too much or too are asking too much for the, that player's level, okay? So you wanna make sure that that's, that's not something you're doing. Whatever you are, are playing, you wanna make sure you can master that and, and play it well 
uh, so that it looks easy, okay? Uh, and so if you're, you know, the day before, you're still trying to figure out this one lick, uh, and maybe that thing, that does not need to be in there, okay? Because you know, it's not ready, okay? So uh, just something I would consider. Um, also, the arrangement and composition, uh, have you organized your solo? Have you put thought into it? the beginning, the middle, and the end, and how you're gonna get from point A to point B, right? Um, and so th those are the ki kinds of things that are gonna be judged in the selection. Uh, something else I wanna say is that, you know, generally speaking, the solos, uh, I think for like, you know, the majority of these, of these categories are, you have a five minute time limit. And um, I've seen students go in there and they play for a minute and then they're done. Okay, and that's great, you know, maybe that's all you were able to do, um, but you know, if you're working early enough and you're starting with enough time, you could probably, you know, maybe snowball that into maybe a little bit more, okay? The more of those five minutes you can use, the more you can show off all the different techniques, all the different things you know, and as long as they're done tastefully uh, within the, the idea of your soul, okay? So we'll get to more of that here in a second, but uh, also uh, originality uh, is also under that selection category. Uh, and so the main thing I wanna say here is try to be memorable, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now that um, whatever song of the year was this year for Dove Awards, you know, uh, you know, it's very common to hear uh, whatever popular song, you know, was being done by the, the latest, you know, Christian band or whatever. And so um, I would be really hesitant to, to, to use one of those songs because, you know, if you like it and it was very popular around uh, the country, then more than likely, you know, people on the other side of the country liked it as well. Maybe they're also wanting to do the same song. So it's going to be really hard for you to stand out if everybody's you know, uh, doing the same song, okay? Now, unless you come up with an original way to arrange it and maybe mash it up with another song, uh, or you can, you know, really dress it up in a, in a good, fun, musical way, hey, that's a different story. But if you're just singing, you know, uh, I don't know, Graves in the Gardens, just for example, or whatever song, um, I, I just would encourage you to, to just consider trying to find ways to make it, you know, original, to make it more uh, uh, unique, okay? The other thing I wanted to say is that, um, and I want to go ahead and put a shameless plug for this YouTube channel, 4J Music. Um, I, um, I'm going to be putting out a video here really soon, and, and over the years, I've competed in and judged many drum competitions, uh, including fine arts, and there are some things that I've seen um, that a lot of people have just been very creative in how they've uh, been able to make themselves stand out in the field of competitors, okay? Uh, so I'm just going to make a video of that here really soon. Uh, drums, you know, that's my main instrument. Um, but uh, I want to share that with you at some point. So if you if you are interested in that, maybe you're a drummer um, and uh, you want to kind of get some ideas, you know, you can come up with your own, but uh, this will be a good, you know, starting point for you. I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can be, uh, you know, notified whenever that, that video drops, okay? Uh, the second uh, major category here is community communication. Uh, and this is where a lot of students lose points right away because uh, they are very stoic. They're not, they don't show any emotion. They don't even look at the crowd. They play this beautiful solo on the piano or whatever instrument, uh, but they never acknowledge their crowd. They never uh, communicate. And so one of the ways I, I would say, you know, let's say I'm a drummer and I'm going to play something uh, is, you know, one way you can really, really get your crowd involved is to kind of, you know, uh, maybe do a little bit of forward on the floor and get them clapping along with you as you do um, some really, really uh, more complex things over that, okay? Another way I would suggest that, that you would do that is let's say, you know, you want to do a call and response, you know, you know, get the people clapping and responding in that way. Uh, and so, you know, you can always come back to that theme uh, and make, you know, your, your solo a little bit more intentional that way uh, if you're able to get the crowd to respond to you, right? And so uh, that's just, you know, a little idea there. If you can find another way to get them to respond to you, I mean, uh, please, the sky's the limit on that, okay? Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, as far as the uh, communication aspect of it, uh, you know, you want to make sure you use your body, okay? And whether you are bobbing your head to the beat that, you know, the, the groove that you're laying down on the bass or whatever, uh, you know, or even maybe using what I call the stank face, okay? Let's say you're playing a chord um, and you're going, and then you do that like diminished chord. Give me a little, a little, you know, a little, something like that. That's okay. That That's fine. Like that's, man, that's showing you are, you're doing a little, 
a, a little extra sauce in there, right? And that is perfectly fine. That's what they want to see. They want to see you be you, okay? How, how are you going to be you as you throw in that, that you know, nasty diminished chord or whatever uh, in there? And so I encourage you to do that. Find ways to be expressive in your music, okay? Uh, and at the same time, if the music is more upbeat, obviously you're going to find more ways to maybe move your whole body, move from the knee or whatever, things like that. Bob your head. Uh, again, that communication and that stage presence, um, you know, it's it's going to really, you know, uh, be a way, a good way to be effective as, as a communicator through your instrument, okay? Now, uh, getting over the presentation technique, this is really the meat and potatoes of your solo, okay? Um, because if I'm playing, you know, the, the guitar or the bass or the drums, uh, this is, you know, how you're going to be judged based on your knowledge of that instrument, okay? Now, here's the thing is that, you know, I, I don't have time to go over, you know, every aspect of every instrument and, you know, fretting or sticking or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to hit some highlights here, but some of these are very general and they apply everywhere. Okay. And so let me talk about three things here in presentation technique. Number one, dynamics. Okay. With well, the word dynamics, uh, yeah, that refers to louds and softs. And so what happens a lot of times, and I'm going to use drums as an example here, as a drum judge, I get tired of hearing loud drums the entire day. If I'm judging 20 drummers that day and they're all just mashing, you know, thrashing, that's going to get really tired. Okay, what I want to see is a drummer that can come and play and be technical and, and be expressive uh, at different volumes. Okay, it is a lot harder to play clean and soft than it is to play loud and just be, you know, uh, fill up the whole room with sound, right? So, um, you know, use dynamics. Don't just overuse the loudest end of the spectrum, okay? And that's for any instrument, right? Um, the second thing is rhythmic stability. Uh, even though you're not allowed to use a metronome um, in the in the presentation, during the presentation, uh, you can still practice with one because every good judge, once you get going, they're gonna tap their foot to feel your pulse. And if they feel that fluctuation, you know, those pushes and pulls, that's something that can take away uh, from, from, you know, it'd be a, it can be a point deduction or whatever, okay? And I've had to take points off for students because, man, they're playing great. This is a ridiculous fill, but every time they do that fill, it's like they speed up a little bit more and they speed up a little bit more. Uh, and before you know it, they're, you know, 10, 15 clicks faster than the, than the one they started, right? And that, that, that it didn't seem like it was intentional. Um, so I encourage you to use a metronome as you're preparing, right? Um, and the last thing I want to talk about a presentation technique is tone quality. If you're doing a trumpet solo, you want to make sure that you sound like a trumpet. And it is, as a band director, I teach band, that's my day job, uh, I can tell you that it's possible to play the trumpet and not sound like a trumpet, right? And so let me give you another example on that is, uh, let's say you, you're, you're doing an electric guitar solo and you've got your, you know, 30 pedals out, whatever, and you're doing 17 distortion pedals and everything. It's kind of hard to hear any clarity of what you're doing uh, even though you may be playing the most like epic, you know, pattern, uh, whatever on the, on the fretboard, um, if we can't tell what it is supposed to be because of all the effects you have on there, um, you know, it, 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 it'll, it'll be really hard for us to give you the credit for that, right? So be really careful about the tone quality of your instrument. Uh, we want your instrument to sound the way it's supposed to, okay? Now, um, I'm going to skip ahead because uh, I've got to move on and cover some more things here. But the last thing I want to talk about is overall effectiveness. That's at the very, very bottom of your score sheet, okay? Um, and uh, there, there's a few things there that, you know, um, they'll, they'll um, you know, there are there are criteria in there. But the one I want to focus on is understandable concept, okay? And here's where I really want to make sure that you're paying attention. And I know that the video is dragged on for a very long time. But this is what really, really drives me up a wall when I'm judging because, you know, at some point, if I would have had five minutes with that particular participant, um, you know, to be able to coach them before they walked in the room, it would have completely changed everything, right? And so what we have a lot of this that goes on is we have students that walk in and they're playing chords. That's all they do is they play chords on the guitar, on the bass, or they, may, they play two minutes of the same rock pattern on the drums. And that's great for what you're doing maybe uh, at church, maybe on the platform, you're playing, you know, um, a hymn or you're playing, you know, a Maverick City song or something like that. And that's the way you play the song. 
that's fine for that setting. But for a solo, we have to have something a little bit more uh, like melodic, okay? Let me give you an example of that. So I'm gonna kind of use an old hymn. Uh, and by the way, let me just tell you that if you're able to integrate old hymns, uh, something old with something new, that is, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna touch somebody's heart, okay? The old people like us, we love the oldies, and we also love the new stuff. But when if you, if you're able to mix it somehow very effectively, you got something going there, okay? But let me show you. This is a I Surrender All, uh, that old hymn, okay? And so if I'm just playing I Surrender All. So I surrender all, but you can't tell it's the song, right? Because there's no there's no melody to that. So let me show you what I mean by that. This is going to be I surrender all with melody. Um... You hear the difference? You actually hear. You can tell what song it is. Okay. Now, if that's the song you're using, you know, I, I would even you know, add variety to this by maybe changing up the chord progression or changing up the feel, maybe going a little faster, slower, uh, you know, however you want to dress it up. Uh, I, I had a friend in college that he liked to play it this way. So that's what he would do. He would change up the chords. Uh, and there are chords, you know, as you start growing in your music theory, uh, there are going to be some chords that are interchangeable. You know, if I'm in the key of D, uh, the B minor and the D are very, very closely related, right? Uh, and so, you know, that's all I did is I switched the, the, the D for a B minor. And that, you know, uh, really didn't change much of the melody, but, you know, I was able to kind of uh, add some different chords in there. So, uh, listen, uh, just to wrap it up, a, a good solo will have variety. It'll show your range and ability and will be memorable, okay? Uh, and so if you are playing a solo and all you're doing is chords, the judges may remember you as the kid that just played chords, but that's not really a good reason to be memorable, you know? Uh, so I encourage you to really find ways to, to you know, get out of that uh, pocket, okay? It's kind of playing contrary to the way you would in worship on Sunday morning, all right? So uh, anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. I encourage you to really work on it, prepare, um, and you know, refine your craft, spend time on this, uh, and put some thought into it and maybe even, you know, organize your solo in whatever instrument you're playing, you know, write stuff down. My intro is this, you know, that I'm going to go to this, uh, whether you're modulating, changing keys, speed, time signature, all the different things like that. You need to have a plan for what you want your solo to sound like. All right. And uh, listen, guys, I know this has been a, a, you know, fairly long video, but I hope that you've gotten something out of it. Right now you're at the development part, right? You've discovered that you have a gift. Uh, yeah, you have some talent that the Lord has blessed you with, and now you're developing that. And a good way of developing that is to have people that are seasoned veterans be able to guide you along the way and show you what to do and what not to do. All right. So uh, anyway, I hope this has been beneficial to you. And I would uh, just, you know, encourage you to continue to work. Uh, and I hope to see you at Nationals. All right. Thanks. Bye bye.